to you all and God bless you on this morning uh, glad to see each of you all glad to see who we didn't see last week uh, uh, you and uh, I guess that's brother Joe and, and uh, sister Bell over there and we didn't see y'all mother because y'all y'all electricity as they say in the hood y'all electricity wasn't working all right all right well we're going to a familiar passage of scripture Particularly if you've ever gone to an African-American funeral, they only quote a couple of scriptures. And it's almost, this is almost always on the obituary or on the funeral program somewhere. Uh, our text comes from 2 Timothy 4, uh, verses 1 through 8. It reads as follows, I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure affliction, do the work of the evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto also, uh, to all them also that love his appearing. I'd like to hang my hat on verses 6 through 8 from this text. For I am now, Paul talking to his son in the Gospel of Tim Timothy, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. For a few minutes on this Sunday, I'd like to ask the church a very important question. Have we kept the faith? Ask that question out loud with me. Have we, Have we kept the faith? Kept the faith? <laughs> then ask someone close to you, ask, have you kept the faith? Now get that old cell phone out and turn that camera on around. Now let's do a little self-talk with our ex-selves and say, have I, have I kept the faith? Have we kept the faith? What a stirring question for the church at such a pivotal time on God's spiritual clock. In our text, the Apostle Paul is writing to his son in the Gospel, Timothy. The Apostle Paul is encouraging Timothy to stay faithful to the cause of Christ and to stay outside of the coming apostasy that the church world will encounter in 2 Timothy 4, verses 2 through 5. It reads as follows, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall be turned and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. The Apostle Paul in these verses gives Timothy both a charge to keep and keen margin orders for his ministry in the days to come. The Apostle Paul's charge to Timothy in 2 Timothy 4 verse 2 was to preach the word be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine.
Then Paul spoke of an adverse time to come in verses 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall be turned, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and be turned unto fables. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I surely feel that we're solidly in that aforementioned time now. Uh, then the Apostle Paul gives uh, Timothy the charge, which is included in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5, when he writes, But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions through the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. This is a powerful charge to any servant of Christ, even today. As awesome as these personal and powerful charges are to Timothy, ministers of any era, and servants of Christ of any era, my focus today is to highlight what the Apostle Paul said after he gave this charge to Timothy. The Apostle Paul turns his focus inward and contemplative when he starts to consider the brevity of his own life's expectancy. And then the Apostle Paul started to tout his own body of spiritual work. 2 Timothy 4 verses 6 through 8 is where the Apostle Paul espoused that his time is fleeting. But in the midst of that, Paul started to flash his own spiritual resume. Paul wrote, for I'm now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not for me only, but unto all also that love his appearing. Saints, not only do we have a charge to keep, but there's a prize to receive. There's a crown of righteousness reserved for those that love the Lord's appearing. The Apostle Paul wrote these powerful words at the time on as the time on his own life's personal clock was ticking. The Apostle Paul heeded that the time of his departure was at hand. Then the Apostle Paul assessed his own life's spiritual purpose and spiritual mission in 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 7 when he utters these powerful words, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. These words are so striking and pivotal. Can we say the same of ourselves? The Apostle Paul said these words proudly like any of us uh, have once we knew that we had passed a tough exam. The Apostle Paul said these words on the other side of all of life's tough exams and life's harsh quizzes. The Apostle Paul could say these following words after he had endured all that life had thrown at him. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Wow, saints, have we kept the faith. Saints, none of us needs to be weary in when doing well because there will be a time when our personal witnesses should be bespeak to our having kept the faith. Have we kept the faith? The Apostle Paul gives Timothy the, Timothy, his last ministry instructions because the Apostle Paul knows that he will not survive his current imprisonment. So the Apostle Paul clearly and boldly charges Timothy, commands him to hold to the faith that Paul has personally seen and personally lived. He can do this knowing that Paul had faithfully served God. Paul, Timothy, and each of us can expect the heavenly rewards given to all of God's followers. My brothers and sisters in Christ, none of us are going to be here forever. We all have a final exam looming that we all need to pass. Tell someone that I'm going to pass the final exam. I'm going to pass my final exam. Well, while the Apostle Paul was facing his coming death, he looked back and gave three positive statements about his ministry. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. 
The Apostle Paul never said that he kept a faith, but he said that he kept the faith. The Apostle Paul believed in Jesus as the resurrected Messiah. Can we say the same? Have we kept the faith? 1 Corinthians 6 verse 12 records the following. Uh, it's a Paul wrote to the church at Corinth. He said, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Hebrews 9 verse 24 states, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. Is there anyone here that wants to receive the prize? And if you want to receive the prize, let's run this race called life so that we may obtain the prize. Hebrews 12 verse 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Are there any runners in the house under the sound of my voice right now? Who's committed to running this war race with patience? Since there's a prize to be won, there's coming a payday for all that will keep the faith. For us to get there, saints, we need to have a stirring and a revival of the faith. We're living in a day where we don't know what our fellow believer believes at all. Acts chapter 14 verse 22 states, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. I'm exhorting for all of you all to continue in the faith, but here comes the tricky part of that text. It says in the B clause of that verse that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Some of you all want to leave this message right now. Nobody wants to go through anything in this day. Nobody wants to suffer very few decide to sacrifice. But this text states that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Have we kept the faith? Maybe we once kept the faith, but that, that much tribulation thing just took us out of our game. It's okay if any one of us has missed it before, but there's a day coming where our next test will be our final exam. Tell someone near you, you need to pass this big test. Saints, our next test just might be our final exam. And, and you know, when you stand before Christ, I know you think that God's going to grade on a curve, but if you don't know him, you might be in a little bit of trouble. Our lives have been filled with pop quizzes, easy assessments, routine evaluations, but one day soon we have a final exam coming in. We don't know the day nor the hour, so we had better be prepared for our final exam. Ask your neighbor, are you ready for your final exam? Have we kept the faith? The Apostle Paul offered his life for the sake of the gospel. The Apostle Paul looked back on the life that he lived and he could say that he had kept the faith. Could we dare say the same? The Apostle Paul had done the service, gone through the difficulties of his personal warfare, and he had been instrumental in carrying the cause of Christ powerfully. The Apostle Paul knew that he had fought the good fight of faith. Have we done the same? As a matter of fact, ask your neighbor, where are your battle scars? Where are your battle scars? If we're in this fight that's being spoken of in this text, then we should have some battle scars to prove it. How are we stating that we're fighting a good fight when there's not a scar on us? Uh, what have we suffered personally for the cause of Christ? Now ask yourself, what have I suffered personally for the cause of Christ? The Bible commentator Matthew Henry has the following 
calling to say about this particular verse. Matthew Henry said, the life of a Christian, but especially of a minister, is a warfare and a race. Sometimes compared to the one in the scripture and sometimes to the other. Secondly, it's a good fight. A good warfare, the cause is good, and the victory is sure if we continue faithful and courageous. Thirdly, we must fight this good fight. We must fight it out and finish our course. We must not go over till we are made more than conquerors through him who have loved us. Fourthly, it is a great comfort to a dying saint when he can look back upon his past life and say with our apostle, I have fought, I have kept the faith and the doctrine of faith and the grace of faith towards the end of our days to be able to speak in this manner what comfort, unspeakable comfort will it afford. Let it then be our constant endeavor by the grace of God that we may finish our course with joy. Can I call Apostle Paul back to the witness stand one more time? The Apostle Paul wrote the following to the church at Rome in Romans 8 verses 35 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Paul wrote, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written for thy sake we are killed all the day long we are counted as sleep for a sheep for slaughter nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us for I am persuaded Paul wrote that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Saints, we have a charge to keep. We have a price to pay and an expectation from on high that we would keep the faith. Saints, on any day, death is lurking in our neighborhoods. Do we desire the faith God one day with our half-hearted witness? Have we kept the faith? Have we fought a good fight? Have we finished our course? Saints, these aren't essay questions. These, this exam is going to be really easy. The answer is either yes or emphatically no. Let's work our spiritual bottoms off until we can have the resolve that Paul did. Facing his own demise, which can be our state on any day, especially in Memphis, Tennessee. Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Have we kept the faith? We have so many that proudly share about their doctors, doctorates of divinity. I will praise those of you that had them for working hard to get your doctorate. The question of the hour, though, for all of us is will we fight? Listen to that. Say that with me. Will you fight? fight. Will you finish? And will you keep the faith? We need fighters. We need finishers. We need keepers of the faith. Jesus paid too much for us not to pay the price for him at the toll booth of life. Can we say that we're keepers of the faith when fear and distraction has us at such a spiritual low? Our belief systems are filled with fear. Our lives are filled with distraction. We're lukewarm as a church because fear and distraction has gripped the best of us so. We have great spiritual gifts that get distracted by power, distracted by fame, distracted by the dollar, distracted by stuff, and distracted by the cares of this world. We're now like the Laodicean church because we're neither hot nor cold, but truly lukewarm as believers. COVID exposed the church's weaknesses as few things had before. As a church, we're fearful of people, we're fearful of the opinions of men, we're fearful of the power of Christian systems, and we're fearful of all of these, and then we're fearful of betrayal, 
we're anxious over the power of the enemy and traumatized by the threat of men. St. Matthew chapter 10 verse 28 states, And fear not them that kill the body, the Bible says, but not are able to kill the soul, but rather fear them that is able to fear him that is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. Church, we need to feel the fire of God once again. We need the boldness of Peter and John. We need for people to see that we've been with Jesus. We need to have the zeal for his presence. We need the passion for our Savior once again. We need to once again become defenders of the faith. How can we be keepers of the faith that we won't defend? Are we keeping the faith? I pray that each of us are. On the other side of keeping the faith are breakthroughs that we wouldn't imagine. I believe that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. When all of this is all over, I want to look back over my life. And I want to say like Paul did, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. And I have kept the faith. Saints of God, right up here this morning, right on this summer morning, I'm telling you that we need to be keepers of the faith. Uh, we're going to have a bad witness in this moment. We're going to all have it printed on our little programs. And we got some of this right. We may have fought a good fight because it ain't nothing for us to tangle with our family. It ain't nothing for us to tangle with our co-workers. It ain't enough for us to tangle with our neighbors. And some of us may think that we finish our course by virtue of the age that we live to. But the thing is, the question of the spiritual clock, the question of the moment, have I kept the faith? Saints of God, no matter of attacks to keep you from keeping the faith, saints of God, I'm preaching that to you on this morning. And this is a moment to truly reflect because I do believe that the majority of the 21st century church needs to get slapped on the bottom again. We need to get infused with the Spirit of God again. We need to go back to where we first meet them. We need to say like that song, that Andre Crouch song, take me back to the place where I first believed. Saints of God, I know we have all those questions. Can you get to heaven if you do this? Can you get to heaven if you do that? And I'm not here to send you to hell for doing this or that. But I answered a guy one time, dude, that may be what I can do. But I'm so scared of God that I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it and miss him. We're saying all the things that are fine with God. It'd be awful to get up there and find out that they wasn't, wasn't okay with God. We've lost the reverential fear of God. We treat God like he's the mayor. We treat him like the, he's the president. Like we got to vote in the decisions of God at all. Our God is sovereign. He says what needs to be done. And he ain't asking you for your opinion at all. I'm telling you in this morning, before you go to R.S. Lewis, before you go to M.J. Edwards, before you go to Ed Harrison, before you go to any of these funeral homes, I'm telling you, you better know, have I kept the faith? Can you look back over your life? Matter of fact, stand up and turn around and face backwards and look back over your life. You go back to the 20s, you can go back to 2010, you can go back to 2000, can you go back to 1990, 1980, 70, 60, and 50, and can you rightfully say that I have kept the faith? Saints of God, I don't want to stand in front of God. I don't want to stand in front of God and now not know that I had some church's credentials, but I hadn't kept the faith. Sense of God, I'm preaching that to you on this morning. 
we're too shaky, we're too timid, we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but this is serious, this ain't no game, this ain't no plaything, it's hell, or, or it's heaven or hell, you ever get it right, you either get right, or you get left, saints of God, on this morning I'm telling you, have you kept the faith? And even if we hadn't, I want you to do that. Start getting your spiritual shoes and start digging in. Take your one day, take your two days. Before we used to run, we used to say on your march, get ready, get set, go in 2023. In June, or whatever today's date is, I'm telling you that we better keep the faith. God's coming back, and he's looking for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. I know no one likes preaching like this anymore, but saints of God, I want to be like Paul. I want to say I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. If there are any keepers in here on today, let me hear your war cry. Let me hear you shout. Let me hear you pray. Let me tell you, hear you say, I have kept the faith. I can look over the back door of my life and I can think things over. I can do like Lance Watson says. I thought that thing over, and I thought that thing through, and I'm gonna tell you that I can say I have kept the faith. I ran with a pack of folks, but I don't want to be in that number. I don't be scared to be in the minority when everybody around me splits hell wide open. I won't be able to see Jesus and say I kept the faith. I finished my course. Oh God, on this morning, I'm preaching it and tell you that if you haven't done it right, that if you haven't kept the faith, let's dig in and make today the rest of our spiritual life. As a matter of fact, stand up and tell somebody this is day one of my new spiritual life. This time, I'm keeping, I'm keeping, I'm keeping, I'm keeping, I'm keeping, I'm keeping, I'm keeping the faith. 